welcome to the Hashimoto's Doctor Podcast. You're now part of a growing community of people determined to take their health back through education and self-empowerment. But because of the healthcare system today, we don't have access to the types of healthcare that we want. So we have to do things differently. We've got to do things smarter, and we do that by becoming our own advocates. This podcast will give you the perspective and thoughts of one of the world's leading Hashimoto's doctors. So let's get started. Hey guys, Dr. Shook here. I hope you're doing well today. In today's podcast, what I want to talk to you guys about is a very exciting topic that I think in a lot of ways has some you know, revolutionary applications. And one of those does happen to be Hashimoto's and thyroid autoimmunity. But this is just a super fascinating and interesting topic. What we're going to talk about today is photo bio modulation. What is that, right? I know that's what you're asking. So photo, light, bio, biological, body, uh, living organism, modulation, change. Okay, so photo bio modulation. What we're really looking at here is, there, there are several different things I want to talk to you guys about, but in particular as it relates to Hashimoto's, there, there has been some research that's been going on. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, it's been primarily uh, carried out in Brazil. And what they, what they have uh, investigated is the utilization of low-level laser therapy. In the, in the scientific literature, you'll see it listed as LLLT. It's an abbreviation for low-level laser therapy and Hashimoto's. And they've been looking at applying laser therapy directly to the thyroid gland to see if they can decrease some of the immune reactivity that is occurring. And a lot of the preliminary research has been very promising, showing uh, the, uh, the potential to decrease antibody levels, and which would, we would think correlates with less immune reactivity. Um, however, if you follow me at all, you know that when we start talking about thyroid antibody levels, they, you know, they're, if they're high, then they tell you that there's an abnormal immune response. If they're low, it does not tell you that there's no immune response. And so I, there's, there's a lot of research going on. It looks promising. It, it's very interesting. And I think, but before you run out and grab lasers and start, you know, or you find someone to put a laser on your thyroid, you know, one of my biggest concerns is this. Like, you know, whenever you purchase lasers, because we have lots of different lasers that we've used in our office, and whenever you purchase a laser, one of the first things that you learn about utilizing it is that you're told by the, the manufacturer, first of all, um, that you're never, you know, never to apply it to an area of, you know, that, that could contain or over, they say, they basically say outright cancer, right? Never apply it to an area where there's, um, there's uh, cancer because the idea is that this, the light energy stimulates the production of ATP. It's an energy molecule that your cells produce that help them to um, grow and thrive. Well, so, you know, there's, Thyroid cancer is, you know, is a real possibility for people that have autoimmunity. And so I'm, I'm not saying that it's going to promote it, but I'm not saying it's not going to promote cancer if, if you have abnormal cells. That's my biggest concern with it. I mean, could we use it and potentially help, help people to, you know, very significantly possibly decrease thyroid hormone uh, destruction? And I mean, is there a potential for improving and, and stimulating, uh, you know, uh, increased growth of the thyroid like like you know healthy regrowth is that a potential application i mean i'm very interested to learn more and i'm interested to see what the researchers come up with but before i would you know i would endorse it i and i have to know that it's you know it's going to be safe for people and at this point you know it's it's something that you're told right from right from the start when you get a laser don't use this over areas you know where there's um potential for cancer this uh, you know because you might the the fear is that you might feed the cancer with that light energy that it might actually encourage growth now I've I don't know that there have ever been any studies that have shown that light therapy with low-level laser therapy has encouraged or increased that um, I think it's more of the theory I could be wrong but I'm not aware of any literature or research on that but I, I think it's really you know that's based on the theory that 
the light energy stimulates energy production and that you wouldn't want to put energy necessarily into cancer cells but my you know my there's you can't necessarily compare cancer cells directly to healthy cells because they function diff differently and there's a lot of different characteristics who knows i mean it, it may actually be beneficial in the fight against against cancer but i don't know those details but this is something that is very intriguing and i wanted to share it with you guys now something that is you know that we do know is that so i, I told you we we're going to talk about the a lot of the various applications here it's not just using it on the thyroid which i'm not endorsing i'm not i'm not an advocate of that i i just wanted to make you guys aware of the literature and some of the research that's been done and i think it was primarily done in brazil on using low level laser therapy on the thyroid in people with Hashimoto's and there have been some very interesting outcomes that look like they could be positive. My biggest concern is that it might encourage, you know, if there are any cancer cells there that, that you have, that are not detected or have not been detected, then could we, are we potentially encouraging growth or is the anti-inflammatory benefits of the laser actually beneficial to possibly help improve or decrease? The, the, the potential for cancer. Because we know that the ongoing immune system destruction of the thyroid, it creates a lot of damage to the cells and the DNA, which, um, which is a, you know, basically something that we think of as being a, a precancerous state, that we're, we're setting the stage for cancer with inflammation and ongoing destruction of the cells and the DNA. So there's, there, there are definitely two sides of the argument, at least two sides here. Uh, I don't know enough about it, but let's do talk about some of the things that we are becoming more aware of. So, um, Dr. Hamlin, I think it's David Hamlin. You can just Google David Hamlin, H-A-M-L-I-N, is a uh, he's a doctor, Ph.D. researcher at um, Harvard University. I think he's in the dermatology department, and he is one of the leading experts on on photobiomodulation, this study of light. And they have been doing, he's, he has published a lot of literature on this, and they've been doing a tremendous amount of research on light therapy and its impact on different processes of the body, but there's been a lot of interest in transcranial, transcranial um, you know, light therapy. So that means through the skull, right? now. They use lots of different types of light, right? And there's they use red light, they use infrared light, and uh, and he is just he is an amazing, you know, amazing wealth of knowledge. It's his entire life's work, and this guy is he's just really fascinating to listen to. And they've done research where they're looking at you know Alzheimer's and neurodegenerative conditions where there's you know there's an inflammatory process going on in the brain. It's causing um, a lot of problems and death of neurons, which are your nerve cells. And so we're talking about things like, like Alzheimer's and dementia, and maybe even Parkinson's, that, that this could have uh, potential benefits for and, and improve. And that is un, just unbelievable because, you know, it's, this is, these neurodegenerative conditions are planned, you know, they're projected to bankrupt the United States, that we would never be able to pay for them or care for the masses of people that are expected to have these problems. So we've got to do something about it right now, but this is a very interesting way to look at it because one of the problems that we see is that a lot of the medications for these conditions are just not, they don't, they don't work very well. You know, they're just, there's no home runs in, in Alzheimer's uh, research for a particular medication. Now there are some amazing um, dietary and lifestyle factors that have been, you know, that that have from a from a functional health model that have been um, observed and shown to really have some great promise, and that is something that um, that is definitely worth you know keeping uh, keeping in mind that it's you know diet and lifestyle are critically important, critically critically important. Keeping inflammatory levels low and normal are important, but there are tools like this that we may be able to utilize. And Dr. Hamlin, you know, he is, I know that they have utilized some of these, these therapies on people that have Alzheimer's. And I've heard him in an interview comment on the significant changes. Now, how long it lasts, who knows? You know, I, I, everyone's going to be different. And, and, you know, there, if you've, if you have any exposure to Alzheimer's or you've read about it, then you know that they're really, Alzheimer's is really at this point in time, 
uh, at the time of this podcast, it's being broken down into about six or five or six different subtypes of Alzheimer's that they believe is being driven by different processes metabolically. So I don't, you know, I don't know all the details except that I know Dr. Hamlin. I heard him in, in, in an interview talk about how there was, you know, utilizing, and he was talking about using some very cost-effective technology. Now you can look at certain photobiomodulation device, devices that you might use on your on your 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 head or your body that could be, you know, thousands of dollars. But he was talking about using an infrared 850 nanometer um, L, you know, LED, which is a light emitting diode array that you could use directly on the head for say 10 minutes. That was one of the things I'd heard him saying and that could be very, very cost effective and very beneficial. And he was actually said, you know, a lot of people don't have money to afford these things. You can get some very elaborate devices. I mean, we, we, you know, we, I have some, you know, I have a device at my office that's a, a and it's a red LED, so it's red lights, and it's infrared lights in pads that you can wrap around your body in different places. But that was a that was about a you know three thousand dollar purchase. These he was talking about that now there are these infrared, and I know this is going to sound this this is this is going to make you kind of um, your jaw drop a little bit because you're going to think you know how could something like that work? But it's the same technology, so just bear with me. He he discussed using an infrared basically it's an illuminating device that can be used in security systems like home security systems you know you guys have seen like the uh, the infrared cameras right that you can set up for home security and they have the the little L LEDs around them those are infrared LEDs that help the camera to see well they make these things that look like floodlights and they have about you know anywhere from 96 to 180 or so or 192 or something L LEDs that you can get for about sixty dollars, and he said that in a clinical setting, and this is this is something for home security, right? Home security. He said that those same that the same to, to get that same amount of power in a clinical device, you would you would pay tens of thousands of dollars. But these, he said, there it's the same it's the same technology. It's just made, you know, it's made very very cheaply, and not that it's not going to work. It's it, it just goes to show you <laughs> what happens in healthcare. Uh, that's all I can say is that you know a lot of a lot of things that can be done very very cheaply um, are put into a nice package and device and sold you know sold as um, as a medical device. But I mean, there's different you know I guess approval and 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 you would think there's there are processes of approval that probably cost money. But I anyway I digress. Um, you can look him up though, Doctor Hamlin, Mass General. Um, Harvard PhD. I think he's over the he's he's involved, or if he's not over the dermatology department, but he does a lot of research. Fascinating guy. Lots of interviews. I had to share this with you guys. I'm so excited to share with you this new information and things that I think can really change your life. Guys, I hope this has helped you out. I didn't mean to ramble on so much, but I hope you guys have a wonderful, wonderful day, and I, I look forward to hanging out with you guys again soon. Thanks. Thanks so much for listening. We hope you enjoyed hanging out behind the scenes with Dr. Shook. You can also talk with and learn from Dr. Shook through Facebook Live on our Facebook page at the office of Dr. Brad Shook. Don't forget, you can also get access to our videos, guidebooks, and thyroid programs at www.drbradshook.com. Oh yeah, and don't forget one more thing. We can change the world one person, one family, and one community at a time. Until next time, remember, today is your day, and no one will tell you who you are and what you can be.